Hi, welcome to Powell River Hospital on Maternity Unit. My name is Kelsey, I'm one of the maternity nurses up here. And uh, when you come off the elevators, just hang a left and we are right there. If you can, register yourself downstairs. If you can't, just come straight up and we can register you up here. This is our nurses station. There's usually two maternity nurses working at any given time. If we know you're coming, we can be ready and waiting to escort you into the triage room to assess your labor. This is our triage and assessment room. If you're coming in for a labor assessment, this is where we'll put you. We have everything that we need to track your labor and to assess where your labor's at. This is also the room that we use for NSTs or non-stress tests. So if your doctor or midwife determined that you need more monitoring later on in your pregnancy, you'll come here for about 20 minutes at a time for monitoring of your baby. This is room 423. This is our labor and delivery room. Um, when you are in active labor, this is where you come to have your baby. You stay here for the duration of your labor and delivery, and then we move you after you're all done to a postpartum room. Now when you're here, uh, we have to monitor your baby during your labor. So there are three different ways of monitoring. The first level of monitoring is just a Doppler. So this is what your doctor probably uses in your doctor's office. This might look familiar to some of you. It is literally just a listening device for the baby. So we put this on your belly with a little bit of gel and we find the baby's heart rate and then we listen. Um, the next level up of monitoring is um, continuous EFM. So it's electronic fetal monitoring. So if you're coming in for an NST, this is what we'll do for you as well. We use, we use these straps, so they're nice and stretchy. They're like your favorite pair of stretchy pants. Um, one monitor goes on your lower belly where the baby's heart rate is. And the other monitor goes on the top of your belly where the top of your uterus is. So we strap these to you with those nice stretchy bands and then we listen to the baby and watch your contractions. So this one listens to the baby and this one watches your contractions. If you're doing an NST, we only do that for 20 minutes at a time, as long as everything looks good. If you're doing uh, monitoring during your labor, then we have to listen for longer periods of time, usually for the whole labor, as long as, um, usually for the whole labor, so long as everything looks good, um, then we can take it off for shorter periods of time. But if things are looking a little questionable, we'll either leave it on and just watch more closely, or if baby's low enough, we'll kind of increase the level of monitoring and use something called a scalp clip. So the scalp clip is a direct line to the baby. Um, the doctor or, or midwife will insert uh, the scalp clip into your vagina and attach it to the baby's head. It looks really scary, but it's not. Um, if you ever inserted pins into your fingers when you were little, um, just that little superficial part of your thumb, that's exactly what this is, except that it goes into the top of your baby's head. So the physician will insert it into your vagina and literally screw it into your baby's head and then this part gets attached to our monitor so we can track your baby more closely and more accurately. A lot of babies tend to make their debut in the middle of the night. Uh, if that's the case for your little one and your partner wants to lie down and rest for a little bit, we have these lovely couches here. They're chairs that pull out into beds. And this is our maternity bed. They are fully adjustable, so you can have it in many different types of positions for your comfort during labor. Of course, like any good labor room, there's a bathroom for patient use. We have a shower, we don't have a tub unfortunately, but we have an endless supply of hot water for keeping you comfortable during your labor. You might be wondering about pain control. A lot of people wonder about that. Um, early on in labor, one option is morphine and gravel. That's before you're three centimeters dilated. We give you an injection of morphine and gravel, combination shot, usually right in your bum, when you're early in labor, to kind of get you to relax and go home and labor at home, get some rest and then come back. Um, usually you come back when the pain is too severe to stay at home. The other option, if you're not looking for, um, if you're not looking for opioids, but you want some pain control, um, the other option is laughing gas or Entinox. So ours is supplied in tanks and there's two ways of administering it. One is with a mask. So this connects to the tank and this goes directly against your face. You have to breathe in and out through the mask. If you're finding it too claustrophobic, you can use a mouthpiece instead. So it's just like a little pipette. You use that for the duration of your labor. Um, you can use it right up until baby's delivered and afterwards with no ill effects. It might make you, it might make you feel a little bit dizzy to start. Um, if it does, just take a few normal breaths without the, without the gas and you should be fine. It clears out of your system very quickly. The other option is IV fentanyl. Um, or other opioids. Usually there are, there are a number of opioids that we can give through your intravenous, but um, in, in this hospital we predominantly use fentanyl. 
Now, an IV is something that's scary to a lot of people. Um, I just want to show you that it is not as scary as it sounds. When we insert the IV, the needle goes in with a plastic catheter, and then the needle comes out and the catheter stays. So this is what kind of, this part from, from this part on is what stays out of your skin. The rest of it is a nice soft plastic catheter. And we give the fentanyl um, into your intravenous just as an IV push. Uh, so it's given pretty quickly. It doesn't last very long. And we have to do an exam before we give it, before we start giving it, to make sure that the baby's not going to come out too soon after we give the fentanyl. The other thing, uh, which I'm sure everyone is wondering about, is um, the epidural. Um, so epidurals are one of the most effective methods of pain relief during labor. And um, they're not as scary as they sound. They are inserted the same way an IV is. So with needles first, and then the catheter stays in your skin. A couple bee stings in the back to numb the area. And then a larger needle is inserted into the back with this plastic catheter. It's actually a nice stretchy, rubber, rubbery sort of plastic. That goes into your back, the needle comes out, and then we tape the catheter back up to your back. So this, this hangs over your shoulder and the rest of the catheter is taped to your back with this part, the smallest part being in your, actually in your back. We can start giving you medication immediately right in there. The anesthetist is the one who inserts the catheter. They're available 24 hours a day. Sometimes they have to be called in, so you have a 15 to 20 minute wait to get your epidural. If you know you want one, let your medical provider know immediately that you want one and we can get it sooner rather than later. Sometimes they don't always work. Uh, sometimes they will be one-sided versus another. If you have an epidural catheter, you may not be able to walk. You won't be able to move as much as you'd like to. You'll have a, a numbness in your legs that you won't be able to fill your legs with. So the likelihood of walking and moving about is pretty low. You also have a higher chance of not being able to empty your bladder on your own. So often when somebody has an epidural, we have to empty their bladder for them with a catheter. So the catheter will be put in shortly after your epidural is put in, if it needs to be, and uh, we will monitor your urine output from there. Now we're gonna talk about induction and augmentation. So if your baby's due and um, the doctor and you have determined and or your midwife have determined that um, it's time to get the baby out, um, they'll do an, an internal exam and if your cervix is not favorable or uh, ripe, um, the OB, usually the obstetrician, will use prostaglandins to help ripen your cervix. Prostaglandins are a hormone that we naturally produce and when we use them for induction, they are just used in a more concentrated form. So we use something in this hospital called Cervidil. It's a little piece of gauze that's impregnated with prostaglandins that the physician will put up into your vagina and behind your cervix. This stays in for 12 hours and uh, can usually help soften and um, ripen your cervix and get it ready for induction. So once your cervix is ripened, uh, we need to get contractions started so that that baby can move down and out. We use oxytocin to do this. So oxytocin, the oxytocin that we use uh, is a synthetic form of um, the the oxytocin that we use is, is a synthetic form of the hormone that is naturally produced in our bodies. It's otherwise known as the love hormone. We produce it naturally when we give each other hugs, you have an orgasm, or um, you are just feeling really lovey-dovey. This is a synthetic form of that. That helps produce contractions. So we give that intravenously, and we have to monitor you basically the entire time during infusion. Um, so we have the monitor on, the, the continuous monitor, the two monitors on your belly, we have that on for the duration of your oxytocin infusion, and we watch your contraction pattern. So we make sure you're not having too many or too few. We also track the baby's heart rate during that time to make sure the baby's tolerating the contractions well enough. Another way to augment labor, other than oxytocin, so oxytocin is used for augmentation to adjust your labor, um, or it's used for induction. So if your body's already producing its own natural contractions, um, sometimes, but they're not frequent or um, hard enough, strong enough, we'll use oxytocin to strengthen them and make them more frequent. The other way to augment labor, um, to increase the, effect, the effectiveness of your labor, is to rupture your membranes if they haven't already ruptured. So this is called artificial rupture of membranes or breaking your waters. The physician usually does this, or the midwife will do this, and we use something called an amni hook. This goes into your vagina, and the doctor will, or midwife will feel around for the membranes, the edge of the membranes, and they will nick the membranes with the amni hook. So it's like a little crochet hook. It doesn't hurt the baby, it won't hurt you. It just mix, nicks the membranes, which don't have any nerve endings, so the, the water comes out. 
This allows the baby's head to be more um, adequately applied to the cervix, which helps it open, to up, open up. And it also um, helps us, helps strengthen your contractions because that bag of waters isn't in the way. And um, it helps us to assess how the baby's doing in another way, because if the baby's stressed, the baby will likely poop in their water. Um, and we'll see that when the water comes out. Sometimes you need a little help. And uh, if you have been pushing for a long time and you're just exhausted or baby's not doing very well and, and you're having a hard time getting the baby out, sometimes we use something called assisted delivery. So there's two main methods in which we do this. Um, and both are done by the obstetrician or somebody who is specially trained in assisted delivery. Two methods of assisted delivery that we use in this hospital are vacuum and forceps. So this is our vacuum. It's a suction cup with a pump on the end. Um, it's very sterile and clean and um, the physician puts a little bit of lube on there. It goes into your vagina, onto the baby's head, attaches with a couple pumps, and then with the next contraction, the physician will pull on the baby while you push. When a vacuum is used, um, there's a higher chance of injury to the baby versus the mum. Uh, the baby will often come out with a big bruise on his head where the suction cup was applied. The other method of assisted delivery that we use in this hospital is forceps. So um, our obstetrician is very well trained in forceps and he's a pro with them. He's very, very good. Uh, they look like a scary contraption, but they're really safe when used properly. There is a higher chance of injury to mother versus baby when using forceps. Um, and uh, they have to be used carefully in order to avoid that injury. So these come apart and uh, the physician will put some lube on there, put insert one side first and then the other and get a nice firm grip on the baby's head. And then again, with the next contraction, the doctor will pull and you push. So the baby comes out. He doesn't squash the baby's head. It only closes so far. So the doctor, um, the doctor pulls while you push and um, the baby comes out, ideally with the next two contractions. If cesarean is determined to be necessary, we get a whole bunch of paperwork um, set up and uh, we give you antibiotics and we rush you downstairs to the OR with your support person. The support person stays in the waiting room of the OR while you're prepped in the OR and we monitor the baby as closely as we can during this time. And uh, once you're ready for surgery, they bring, in the, they bring in your support person as late as they can and they get the baby out quickly. Um, monitoring uh, occurs immediately afterwards. If everything looks good, then we can still do delayed cord clamping for two minutes, which is something super beneficial for baby. Um, and, uh, and then the baby goes to our panda, our, our infant warmer or our infant care center. Uh, with the nurse that was your delivery nurse. Once the cesarean is over, um, we recover you upstairs in the postpartum room with the baby. Often dad or the support person will come up with the baby and go skin to skin while they're finishing up with you in the OR and then you'll follow shortly after to start breastfeeding if that's your choice. After your baby's delivered, as long as everything looks good, your baby will go skin to skin with you for as long as you want. We can start breastfeeding immediately um, and cuddle. You can cuddle with your baby. Um, if everything is not okay with your baby and we're more concerned and we need to take a closer look, we will use the infant warmer. So this is on during um, every delivery, just in case. We use this machine to help babies breathe, take their vital signs, and to get a closer look at them. It has a nice little heater on it, so you might, be, you might feel some radiant heat from that. Um, we also use this machine to weigh your baby and to take his or her measurements after they're born. Once you've had your baby, whether it's a vaginal delivery or a cesarean, we'll transfer you into one of our inpatient rooms or postpartum rooms. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of space, so try and keep your personal belongings to a minimum. Um, Baby's Best Chance Handbook has a couple of suggestions on what you should bring to the hospital. You can use that as your guide. Um, there is everything that you need uh, for your hospital stay here. There's a lot of supplies in the bassinet itself, a bed for you and a pull-out chair for your partner. It is recommended during the pandemic that your partner stays with you at all times, no lingering in the hallways, no um, going about the hospital in different rooms. Um, the only time that we or recommend that your partner leaves is to go and get food because we will feed you, but we won't feed your partner. Here at Powell River Hospital, we will do our best to keep you and your baby as healthy and happy as possible. We look forward to seeing you soon.